Hello and welcome to Back Focus. My name is Matthew Tucker. I want to welcome you to this inaugural episode of Back Focus, give you a little bit of background of what this program is going to be about and, interview and introduce our guests this evening. Back Focus is a program that's dedicated to promoting the causes, purposes, activities, and collaborations of Pittsfield Community Television. Now, a lot of people are relatively familiar with Pittsfield Community Television. You're watching us right now, so you are at least a little bit familiar with what it is we do here. However, if you're not if you're not in the community of Pittsfield Community Television, if you're not sort of on the front lines and figuring out what it is we do here, it's very possible that you're not familiar with what it is PCTV actually is and does. The goal of Back Focus is to help change that. And our first step, of course, is to answer the most fundamental question. What is PCTV anyhow? To answer that question today, I have Pittsfield Community Television Executive Director, Bernard Valley. Bernie, welcome. Thank you. Glad and, to be here. And I have uh, the Administrative Assistant to the Executive Director, Jody Cardana. Jody, welcome. Hi, Matt. Thanks. Um, so I want to start first with the, the sort of the, the real basic fundamentals. What is PCTV? Is it... Um, can you give me a basic description of what PCTV is? Uh, PCTV uh, is very similar to other organizational groups like uh, what we are. And basically, uh, there was a law that was enacted at, at one point in the uh, late 50s, early uh, 70s, uh, late, late 60s, sorry, early 70s. And uh, it, when cable operators started providing cable service to each community, uh, they uh, were uh, part of a law that said, well, if you're going to provide this type of service, uh, then you must provide access to the people uh, of the community that you were, you're providing that service. And the reasoning, some of the reasoning behind that was uh, there were telephone poles sitting in their lawn and there's transmission uh, systems going through their, their public airwaves. Uh, the, the air uh, that they had, they owned in their city. So at some point you needed to um, compensate them in a few different ways. And one of the ways was at least provide a path or an avenue or a way to get access to that, to that cable system to be able to relate things that were important to the community or that were about the community. So it wanted to give people the public access to that cable system. Along with that, um, they were required to provide support of some kind, either uh, monetary support given to uh, a, a group uh, such as ours, a nonprofit organization, to carry out the letter of that. So there was a place to come and give videotapes or to be trained how to do it and uh, be able to access the air to get your uh, important community ideas or even to entertain the, the public within your area. So it had, it had sort of a broad uh, meaning to what you would do with that access. But the point was there should be some and it should be supported uh, in a way that they would be uh, able to continue on to year after year. So that was, that was an attitude. Now, not every community immediately adopted that, but ours adopted that early on. Uh, but the cable operator had already been providing community programming, which is not community access. Uh, so community programming, which was done in 1970, actually was done earlier than that, but 1970 was when I started doing that with the cable operator. That was different from what we have today. Uh, at, that, at that point, there was uh, community programming, but it was what the cable operator wanted to put on. It wasn't uh, the public accessing it, making programming. It was what they wanted. So uh, the other things happened in between, and there, there was another access group uh, that took over from the cable operator. Uh, with Tom Curtis uh, did a great job with no, no budget, really, and he provided access to the public. And so he did it for a while uh, in, until the early 80s, and then it disappeared from the air. There was no public access for a while until uh, a group which was formed by concerned people that wanted to have something back on the air uh, started with uh, Ed Riley, Dan Dillon, uh, Jim Boyle, uh, John Fuchs, several people from the community 
formed a, an organization. And at that time, uh, they also uh, asked the city if they could uh, move forward. So the city gave them their blessing in a city council meeting and created, along with uh, a charter that was created at the state level called uh, Pittsfield Community Cable Broadcasting, Inc. So uh, <laughs> A very long name. Very, very long name. <laughs> Uh, which most people don't even know that's our really of our official name and <laughs> it's too long to say when you're answering the phone I know that much. Uh, no we don't do that no so uh, what happened from that the, the original 25 people expanded to a little larger group uh, they started buying equipment uh, they started uh, appointing specific jobs to different people uh, so that they could carry out and move forward with that so that that was the, the original beginnings of that uh, and so from this small community group made up of different backgrounds uh, came the community effort uh, it really produced what we are as Pittsfield Community Television so somewhere around 1986 uh, it was getting stronger and that's when I uh, had joined the organization and uh, myself uh, Pam Peterson and uh, a few other people uh, were on the uh, committee to buy equipment uh, I already had some knowledge in television and I decided to offer that uh, as, as help to get it going. So uh, eventually I uh, was mostly in charge, uh, was considered the vice president, although there wasn't any, a lot of other people, the vice president of uh, engineering. And I purchased the original equipment in 86. And some of what we still have, it still works. Uh, but that's what it started from. And then from there, uh, it was on a single channel. And it handled all the needs of the community. It yep. handled the, the public's needs, education needs, and government needs. And those are called pegs. Uh, now, you can have a single channel peg like we started with. Uh, so you carried out all of the things needed to do for all of those constituencies. Just for, for clarity, peg is public education and government. Right. Um, by the time we had our second franchise, in that second franchise, there was a call for three channels. So that allows programming to expand across that. Uh, the staff had to expand. There was uh, only two or three of us uh, for a number of years. Mm. Uh, and uh, the first executive director was uh, Garrett McCary, uh, somewhere uh, in, uh, I think it was 80, I'm, I'm gonna be corrected on this, I know it was 89, I think, or <laughs> 88. Sorry if I got it wrong. Uh, it was somewhere around there. Uh, it was late in the year uh, that he uh, was uh, made executive director. Shortly after that, he hired the first staff person, and that was Sean Sear. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, yes, our, our current yes, education our, our coordinator. current education coordinator and engineer. Uh, so Sean was, was hired uh, as the first employee other than an executive director, and together they built uh, a format <laughs> and an organizational level of what Pittsfield Community Television began as and mm -hmm. they and they served the needs and expanded the n number of program offerings on the air mm. so mu not much of a staff a lot of volunteers originally uh, not much of a paid staff but they did a hell of a job uh, organizing it forming it making it into something viable to be on the air every day I'd left uh, somewhere around uh, 88 mm -hmm. I left right after uh, right before the uh, first uh, program that was produced by Pittsfield mm. Community Television I departed so uh, so that's one went forward for a number of years uh, currently uh, in this this current franchise um, there's three channels three distinct channels and there yep. had to be more staff uh, so I came in as executive director in 96 97 something like that I was intern for a little while and then executive director and uh, when when that happened also more staff was hired uh, we're going to get to Jody. Jody's waiting oh, patiently no, over absolutely. here. Absolutely, I've, I've got uh, a question for her when you uh, finish so, your thought. I'll so, your time. we hired more staff. We moved into a new building, and we expanded across the three channels mm -hmm. with a person running each one of those channels mm -hmm. under sort of this corporate entity. And the corporate entity was Pittsfield Community Television, which yep. is still the same organization. And underneath that, three channels now existed, and programs were really jam-packed into that original channel then migrated across and then expanded again and again until we are here with uh, three channels that are pretty well uh, expanded with programming and added to staff, the current staff we have now over mm. this, this period of this franchise period that we're yep. in now. So uh, 
some of the thing is uh, some of the things that had to change were if you're going to handle more channels, you had to handle more responsibilities. Yep. And it was too hard for one person to do all those things. So you 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 had to have more staff to to make it expand and and help it along and make it better. And that's what we've always wanted to do. That was the first thing we wanted to do. So. Some of the first staff that were hired, where they, we had to make sure there was a there was a channel coordinator for each channel, so that uh, that's what I came up with, so that there would be someone to be that person to talk to from each one of those constituencies, the okay. public, the education, government, and you also had to expand the office side of things and be able to handle the memberships and all the forms and offices yep. and all the operational things that need to happen. So. I hired Jody <laughs> uh, is the current administrative assistant uh, so she uh, does a great job with keeping the files straight and the bookkeeping straight and uh, runs the office uh, with me so uh, she she does a great job running an office that actually runs three television stations <laughs> uh, so th that's where we currently are with what with the organizational level and of course there's more staff than that right well, I'm sure we'll talk about so. oh absolutely um now, when you were discussing the the background of PCTV and what brought it up and together, you mentioned um, the franchise, and I want to address this a little bit with Jody. What is um, this franchise agreement? I know um, from personal experience that the franchise agreement has something to do with how PCTV runs as an organization and how financially we're viable. but. What is the franchise agreement? And sort of the sub-question is connected with that is, who pays for PCTV? Right, that seems to be one of the more common questions, um, clarifying for the public how we operate and how our financial situation falls together. Um, the franchise agreement, and Bernie can correct me or step in to give the more finer details, um, Time Warner Cable pays the city of Pittsfield an agreement to operate in the city of Pittsfield. If, if you want to elaborate yeah, on that, it's actually a pass through. It's a pass through. Yeah, yeah. Pitt, that, city of Pittsfield. Now, it, yes, that's sort of a, a way of giving back to the community for. Right. Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. That's and part in of that turn, agreement. Okay. Pitt, there are people who think that PCTV works for the city of Pittsfield or for Time Warner. Neither of those things are true. We are an independent nonprofit organization. The city of Pittsfield takes that pass-through money and passes it to us to operate independently to bring at access television to the residents of Pittsfield. So that's how it works. Okay. I've had people call me and say, you know, um, who's your boss at Time Warner Cable? And I say, well, we, we do not have a boss at Time Warner Cable. And it has surprised a few people. We do not <laughs> work for Time Warner Cable. No. We don't work for the city of Pittsfield. We support the city of Pittsfield. We support City Hall. We support their, you know, the coverage, the part of PEG, the government access. Um, but we do that as an independent, board-run, nonprofit organization. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, the money that's collected and used for this purpose it comes from the subscribers of the cable system it's not tax raised money okay so uh, it, it's like money from uh, when you go and look on your bill if you're a Time Warner member mm -hmm. and there's uh, that little spot where it says uh, subscriptions and fees or something right. of that nature it's, it's uh, identified it, as franchise okay uh, so when a company franchises with city whether it's ours or anybody else's there's some kind of fee that's paid mm -hmm. okay in this case, part of that fee, and this is th this fee structure, is set up by the state. We okay. didn't, we don't set it up. You can't change it. It's the, the state set it. Okay. So that you, it can be looked up online if you go on uh, mass.gov. You can look up all of the information. Um, but a portion of that money is called regulated, and a portion of that money is called non-regulated. So this is subscription money. It's not all the taxpayers' money. It's not taxes. What happens though? Part of that money is regulated, and the regulated part. Uh, part of that is uh, goes to the, uh, the the local municipality, so they do okay. get a, a fee. Okay. Uh, it goes to the state. Okay. And it goes to the federal government. Okay. But the bulk of that money comes to and passes through the city, so the city can identify it and given to us. Uh, it's given to us to provide the access to the public and be able to run the facility so that they can have access and that make sure their programming and their voice gets on the air. 
So that's what it's used for. Because we're a nonprofit. It's not for yeah. profits. And I mean, that's the money we operate off of. We we take that money and we budget it as carefully as we possibly can, um, and we just we bring the service. It's a, we're a service provider essentially, where we're giving people access. And the uh, the city of Pittsfield has been wonderful about uh, you know supporting us along the way, and we in turn mm -hmm. you know do our best to support them. Mm. Right. So at at some point that has to be managed and. Uh, accounted for. Uh, it has to be uh, book kept. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we get audited, of course. And we get audited, uh, just like any yes. organization. And yes. that's a lot of work, and Jody handles a lot of that. Uh, yeah, I'm usually the first one who gets my hands on it. Well, Bernie usually gets picks up the uh, money, and I just take it from there, and I keep the books in order, and I answer to the board, our treasurer and board president and the entire finance committee and the entire board. Mm -hmm. Anytime they have a question about you know, how is this money being laid out? And uh, even with our auditor, she asked the same thing. I just make sure everything's in order. We're very transparent. We are, our books are so transparent. I mean, it's all right there. We, you know, I want it, that's the way I want it. At, you want at, transparency. At, that's what you want from yes. your, uh, your non-for-profit yeah, organization. And, and that's one of my, my constant, you know, goals is to keep it transparent. I, I know every penny, where it went, who it's going to, what I did with it, who authorized it, and mm -hmm. I just make sure that all that stays wide open. Yeah, very so, cool. Mm -hmm. So that you know, we we want to uh, make sure that we can identify everything and uh, that that it's easily shown where it is because all the money is spent is spent is spent exactly what it's there for. It's uh, yes. All the uh, some people see us on there and they think this is the only thing we have. We don't. Yep. We have several different locations throughout the city that are used every single week. Uh, and that gives the public access to uh, the political things going on and to all of the other programming that we do. Because in City Hall, in the, in the school systems, there are, other, uh, there are other pieces of equipment that we've installed to allow them to see City Council, School Committee, and all of those kind of things uh, that go on. So it's all invested out in the system. So all of that money that comes in doesn't go into some sort of paying executives or anything. It goes oh, no. ba it goes back into it goes right into the budget, the and, operating budget, and, and that budget pays for PCTV's equipment mm -hmm. um, and PCTV's staff. Yep, correct. Um, and those things then do. I suppose that then leads to what. What is that all for? Why should the community care about Pittsfield Community Television, want to become involved, want to want to sort of cheer the organization on? Well, I, I can start on that. That's because PCTV gives the public a voice. That's what we're here for. This is your chance to take a stand on something that you believe in or something that you want, you know, we support, you know, nonprofits around the community, get get the word out of things that are going on that just to just to support the community. I, and I'm going to cut in very quickly yep. cuz I've got a question about who can use PCTV? Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is there a a specific sort of a a, a small elite group that are allowed to mm -hmm. use it? Is nope. it is it anybody who walks in the door who can use PCTV? First and foremost, we uh, we are for the city of Pittsfield, the residents of the city of Pittsfield. If you live or work in the city of Pittsfield, you can have what is called a full membership, which means you have access to our facilities and our equipment. The uh, regu the um, the stipulation and, and, and the training to use all of that equipment and the training. You have a staff that supports you. The stipulation on that is you must be doing programming for our channel. You, you can't, we're not a lending library. We're not so you can come take equipment and go, you know, film a wedding for your own ha home. This is so you can bring co programming to the community. So we provide all the support. We lead you along the way. And you have access for a very small fee. You have access to a lot of equipment, expertise, experience, support, and you can get yourself right on the air. So, so fee, it's uh, is that a per usage fee or no, is that a? No, it's per year. Okay, it's an it's, annual it's fee. A mem it's a membership yeah. fee. Okay. Right. It's, so, a, go ahead. it's a membership fee, and uh, I don't know if you want to give specific. I'm... Well, it's a it's a membership fee that is basically uh, structured to to not be uh, too much, uh, but it's yeah. enough to help 
pay for, you know, some um, pieces of equipment and help the cost overall. Yes. And it's it's really more of a of a token of the of right, so the community fee. providing a small amount toward what is essentially going right back to them. Okay. So on our, at our website, you have all the breakdowns of how the memberships work. We have a full membership for if you live or work in the city of Pittsfield and are over the age of 18. Um, under Actually, I should ref under the age of 18, if you have a parent or guardian sign off for you, you can have a membership as well. Right. We have an associate membership for those who live outside of Pittsfield but still want to use our facility. They okay. still have to be doing programming for PCTV, okay. but they can come in from, the, from you know, a neighboring town. Right. Um, that's an associate membership. But groups can't. We come have in. we yeah. have a group membership and an organizational membership. That's just based on how many can be named under the group versus organizational. And those are organizations and groups, nonprofit groups only, within the city of Pittsfield. And again, they can. The, the most important thing I always like to stress people who call and ask about this: nonprofit, non-commercial. You can't come on and sell anything. You know, you can't you know promote the selling of somebody else you can't it's just this is for this is community information right. okay and, and, and groups have to be based in the city of pittsfield okay yes. they have to, they the groups do. Be, have to be here mm -hmm. to join as a group so you mentioned uh non-for-profit -for organizations and and non-commercial mm -hmm. so an individual could get involved as long as they weren't selling a business or their, right. a personage they could and get that's, involved and that's usually one of the first things i tell people when they call and ask if they can be a member i say you must understand this is not to sell your little pro your product or your business or anything okay. like that are are there any other restrictions as to what people can say or do on on pctv <laughs> well the the same uh, restrictions apply to freedom of speech. Okay. So uh, basically, you can say anything that is allowable under freedom of speech. Okay. But not everything is allowable on freedom of speech. Uh, certainly, inciting a riot is not allowed. <laughs> and uh, there are some community standards that necessarily people wouldn't be happy that you uh, did. But uh, at some point, it, it, we cannot censor the content. However, it doesn't mean it won't offend people. Right. And it, there wouldn't be a necessarily a consequence from somebody above us, like the cable operator, who is accountable. So uh, we certainly can allow any kind of thing to go on, but you've got to uh, understand that within that's within limits of what freedom of speech allows. So there, there's sort of a, a fundamental thing that I'm getting here that um, within that, that bound of freedom of speech and a, a non-commercial because... PCTV is a non-for-profit organization. Yes. People have the the freedom to talk about what they want, and PCTV doesn't have anything to do with that message. Correct? No. That we don't create we don't create the content on a day-to-day -day basis. Producers from the community create the content. All we do is assist them to be able to uh, do programming in the way that they want to do it. Uh, we we show them the correct and successful way to do it. Uh, and they can choose to do it that way or they can choose not to do it that way. Nobody makes them do the programming the way we want them to do it. We okay. just show them the right way to do it. Okay. Most often they want to do it as professionally as they can because they don't want the content uh, to take away from uh, the fact that they don't want the, the technical uh, qualities of what they're doing take away from the content is what I meant to say. And actually, um, he had brought up another point I'd like to speak about regarding producers. The difference between a producer and a member, or can they be both? Um, this sometimes confuses people a little bit. Most people don't realize that if you, if you have a program, say, that you did on your own elsewhere, and you want the people of the city of Pittsfield to see this program on PCTV, and, it, and it's under our regulations of non-profit, you know, it's you know, some kind of human interest or what have you. You actually don't have to be a member to put it on the air at PCTV, but you can bring it in as a resident of the city of Pittsfield and, and call yourself the producer. And we, we ask you to do what is called a wraparound, which means on camera you say, I am, you know, John Smith of the city of Pittsfield, and I would like for you to see this program. And that will go on the air. You do not need to be a member to do that. You don't okay. need to be a member to have access to the airway. You do need to be a member to use to, our to equipment. To use the facilities. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now that, go ahead. Uh, um, so essentially, that's free. Yes. To, to put a program on is free if, if you produce it or do it on your own outside the facility. That, but it still has that, to be nonprofit. That, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, so it's free access, really. 
I was just going to add that uh, I, I don't want to leave out the rest of the staff. It seems like we talked about everything. <laughs> but uh, the, the staff uh, that's been added, well, we've got somebody on staff who just gave us a time cue <laughs> who's been at the facility for 12 years, more than 12 years now, right? 16 years, I'm sorry. See how time flies? I should say. We've all been here for a long time, uh, including so, you. Norm, <laughs> so Norm Schaefer, who's the public access coordinator, was doing that position uh, uh, for a long time. Mm. Right. There weren't too many volunteers. There's a lot of volunteers now, though. Uh, we have 291 uh, members of the facility now. Uh, who volunteer and do programming. Not everybody does programming, but they work with some capacity or another. And uh, Norm is the public access channel coordinator, so he's the one that programs it, and he's the one that you work through uh, to do public access programming. So most community members would be working with Norm? Most of the time, yes. That most, that's, yeah. that's how it falls. And it, then Sean pretty much takes care of educational, and Dave takes care of government access. Okay. Right. So anything going through the schools will be with Sean Sayre. Okay. And anything going through the governments, the meetings, uh, any government functions, things like that, would be Dave Cachet, who we've just seen do our voting. Uh, yeah, our, our election too. coverage. And then there's two, two guys. Here's there's one of Matt, them. Matt <laughs> Tucker, and Ryan, who's actually directing us. Poor Ryan. Uh, if he can take a shot and wave to the camera <laughs> from the truck. Uh, Ryan is in there directing this particular program. So Ryan and Matt are the uh, production technicians who do a lot of training on all of the channels, work with all the people on all the channels. There's Ryan waving to you right there. <laughs> Setting, and to the left of him is Sean. There, Go back to that for a second. The left is Sean. Sean the truck uh, there, and he's engineering as well as the education coordinator. And uh, we got Tom over there in the corner, an intern helping us. All right. Oh, so and Dave. And Dave's on camera over here. This half hour has flown by. Yes, it has. So I, I, Judy Cardana and Bernardo Valley, thank you so much for joining right, me welcome. today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone, this has been an episode of Back Focus. Back Focus endeavors to show you the other side of Pittsfield Community Television, what happens on the opposite side of the camera. I, and in addition to being a staff member, am a community producer. I'm producing this on my own. So if you want to learn how to make a show like this, come on down to Pittsfield Community Television. We'll teach you how. Until next time, this is Matthew Tucker. Thank you for joining us on Back Focus.